Hello, it's me, and I'm going to return back to the Calvin Fan Evgeny creations of uh, variations of 3 by 3 by 5s Why don't we chop this off over here and end up with this? So why don't we go ahead and continue the uh, process of chopping things down, say over here, to get this L cube. Well, why don't we strip it even more bare, take this down over here too, to have this really dialed down what appears to be a three by three by four. Now in reality, this isn't exactly three by three by four. You notice this looks a lot like this over here. So perhaps we can say the solve strategy is the same. Here's a three by three by four, fully functional, fully proportional. And this one by all sense and purposes looks exactly the same. Everything turns except for one little difference to a three by three by four uh, like this, it turns off-center. Um, in reality, it's not off-center. I mean, it is. It's an off-center 3x3x4 three by three by in that this turns from an axis over here, and this turns from an axis over here. Because in reality, what this is, this has a base 3x3 three three with an extra cross layer up here, and that's exactly how it moves. So it gives it this off-center look to it. But it's cut from the same mold as all of these other guys back here. Well, let's go through a little bit about exactly what this means, how to solve this. But before I do that, I'm going to take a little bit of a tangent to go over what exactly is a cuboid. Why do some of them shape shift like this guy, the 3x3x5, three by three by and some of them don't like this guy, the 3x3x4? Three by three by well, at its heart, as we're talking about cross cubes, as we're talking about puzzles that have circles here, like this 3x3, three three, uh, if I were to free the circle up and allow it to move, if I were to glue extensions on top of it and on the bottom, that's when I'm going to get a cuboid. Now at the base of it, if you take a look at say a 3x3x5, three by three by the reason why a 3x3x5 three three shapeshifts, the reason why you get the even, rather the odd to odd process of shapeshifting is basically because all this is, to keep it fully proportional, if you wanted to be a purist about it, is it's a 3x3 three three cross cube with cross areas with uh, extensions glued to the top and to the bottom. So you don't change the actual behavior of the baseline puzzle, which in this case, I'll use this over here, a 3x3. Three three. So a 3x3 three three will turn 90 degrees in all directions. So too will this. This will also turn 90 degrees in all directions because at its heart, this is really just a cross cube with extensions put onto it. Now in this particular puzzle over here, you can actually see where that's happened. You can see that this is an extension glued onto here. This is a Smaz's um, puzzle. Now, uh, Evgeny and Calvin fans, are pretty much a bottom-up creation, so it doesn't look like that, but it functions exactly the same. Now, what about a 3x3x4? Three by three by what is the base puzzle of this, and why shouldn't this shapeshift? This one shapeshifts because it's not exactly a cuboid made of the same way. Its base puzzle is a 3x3, three three, which means it's off-center, but it also shapeshifts. It does that. The reason why this doesn't is because although a 3x3x5's three by three, uh, by base puzzle is a 3x3, three by three, somewhere over here, the base puzzle of a 3x3x4 three by three by is actually a 3x3x2. Three by three by this is really what the base puzzle is over here. When, now when you take a look at this, the way that puzzles are organized is you have a center, edges, and corners. As I'm sliding edges underneath and through underneath um, the centers. It lines up exactly in the position uh, that it should be right next to the center with the corners on both sides. But the corners don't run into the edges. They don't run in, into their places over here so you can turn it. Same thing over here. This edge piece and this corner as I turn it down here it doesn't change its articulation with the center over here. These corners don't run into the center space either because it's a fully proportional puzzle. No matter how much I build it out or how much I build it up, the basic organization of this odd layer puzzle is that you have an edge to a center and a corner that's in between them. So that never, that never really changes. How is that different over here? Well, what's different over here is the fact that I also have a center and two edges and it can, it can slide across those. This does not have any centerpiece per se. So when I move it over here, the edges run into 
Uh, this edge doesn't have a center, so it runs into these areas here, and the corner runs into the slot of where the edges are over here. So because of that, I don't have an ability to slide this through here. If I were to proportion it differently, maybe I can, but this can't slide across the center. This edge basically needs a center to lock onto, and this corner needs a center as well, so it doesn't latch onto that. So let's say I take a cross cube, a cross puzzle, a 3 by 3 by 2 cross puzzle exhibiting the same characteristics. I turn it into a cross, free this up somehow, some way, and glue extensions onto that. Then it'll end up with this guy over here, which is a 3 by 3 by 4. But because the base puzzle is the same over here, uh, because the base puzzle is a 3 by 3 by 2 no matter how much I build up on top of this, I'm not going to be able to shape shift. So this edge and this center articulates with each other. If I move this down here, I also have a center over here. But when you look at the center of something that's, um, that's odd, the center goes right down into the core. It's attached to the core, so this just slides under that. But when you, when you have an even layer puzzle, there's a center here too, but that's hidden. That's underneath. So you need these two to slide across the centerpiece, the hidden centerpiece on the inside. So when I turn this over here, this edge and they articulate with an internal centerpiece that has this slide across. This runs into the areas that it slides. Plus this corner occupies the slots of these uh, centerpieces here. If the corner occupies a slot, it can't slide through. So no matter how you build this up, no matter what you do to a 3 by 3 by 2 no matter how much you build up in any direction, it's never going to shape shift because you're taking internal centers and combining it with edges that articulate with external centers. Same thing over here. If I turn this over here, this is used to articulating with an internal center that's of a different size, not with this, so it can't slide over, so it's unable to do that. So in essence, that's really how cuboids are born. That's, uh, that's what happens with cuboids, is that you're taking a base puzzle and you're adding extensions, so it follows exactly the same characteristics. Now if you do the same thing with an odd layer puzzle, say a 4x4x4, four by four by four, the centers in here are actually very different as well, because the center here is internal with, e with these center pieces here sliding over that, articulating uh, over that, as opposed to a 3x3, three where these center pieces are uh, come out right from the uh, right from the core, these are internal. They're on the inside, which means I can take these centers and I can put them anywhere. I can actually exchange this center whole center group with this center group, and the puzzle really wouldn't know. Puzzle really wouldn't care that much. But here, I can't exchange centers like that without dragging something else. So if I were to make if my baseline puzzle is a four by four, and I add extensions on top of that on the top and on the bottom, I end up with something like this handsome double, a 4 by 4 by 6. A 4 by 4 by 6 really functionally is just a 4 by 4 cross cube with extensions on the top and the bottom. And I challenge you to take your 4 by 4 by 6, scramble it, solve it with a base 4 by 4, leaving the top and the bottom to be solved independently. So this is really a 4 by 4 cross puzzle. And the reason why this works is because these edges, all of these edges can articulate with these centers over here. So if you take a look at these edges and I turn it down, it doesn't run, the corners don't actually run into this and this can slide along where the centers are on the inside. So to here, if I move this down, then as you can see, these edges articulate nicely with the internal center. So because it articulates with the internal center, it doesn't run into any of the spaces of these outward centers and can actually shape shift. Same thing with the corner. These corners don't run into this. So that's a 4x4x6. Four by four by but what about, say, I don't know, a 4x4x5? Four by four by How does that work? Well, the base puzzle of a 4x4x5 four by four by is actually not a 4x4 four four puzzle. Because if it was, it would be able to shape shift. But if you take a look at it, here's the edges. Here's a nice looking 4x4. Four four, and uh, these have internal centers that slide across. But when I bring this down over here, it bumps into these centers. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These actually are more external. So you're, you're going to see that these edges overlap with centers and the corners overlap with uh, these center pieces over here too so it does not shape shift and that's because the base puzzle of a 4x4x5 four by four by is not a 4x4x4 four by four by four, which has become a 4x4 four four cross cube with just the tops and the bottoms like the 4x4x6 four by four by the base puzzle of this is a 4x4x3 four four 
this over here. And with a 4x4x3, you've got these centers over here with edges on either side, corners here, and you've got these internal centers over here. So when I turn this down, these two centers are running into the center over here so it can't slide across, and uh, these edges are running into these corners. So as long as these corner spaces are running into the spaces of, of edges, and edges are running into the spaces of centers, it does not shape shift. So if I turn this into a cross cube, put something on top of this and on top of that, or below that rather, I'll end up with basically this puzzle here. So this is a four by four by three cross cube, which becomes a four by four by five. And that's why it is a shape shift. And that in essence is the organization of a cuboid. And a, uh, so a cuboid is really just a cross cube, a cross puzzle with a baseline puzzle. And if the base puzzle is a simple cube, then it can shape shift by turning in all directions. If it's a cuboid, or if it's a four by four by three, then it doesn't shape shift because you're just building up. So we divide these two here. This is all like this, this is all like this. Two different types of cuboids because you have two different types of base puzzles, shape shifter and domino. This is solved as a domino, this is solved as a cube, solved as a cube, solved as a domino. So you can see the very different types of scramble that happens with these and I'm just gonna go a little bit further with this. Abracadabra. Okay, it actually wasn't too much different. So basically the strategies here, you've got the cube strategy and the classic domino or cuboid strategy. Ultimately, for this one, you're gonna use cube strategy and then domino strategy. And I'm gonna do the solve based upon how I've been solving the cross cubes, just because it's part of that series. It's not exactly how I do it, but I'm gonna to try to remain consistent with that. So to start off with a three by three by five, to solve the puzzle, uh, to solve the cube, we actually, uh, I use what's called beginner strategy. So I'm gonna start off with the green side over here and uh, get the cross. So here's the green and white. Let's put this where it's supposed to be. Find the white center, move it in, and there it is. I keep going with this, green and red, bring it up. This is done kind of intuitively. Green and yellow. And the other green here, turn, turn, turn. And this should be over here. Okay, so here's the cross fairly easy to see. And then with this, uh, it's just corners, the old R-I-D-I-R-D. I never know how much people understand or don't understand. I don't want to make any assumptions. Sometimes I do. Like I understand that, I figure you know what I mean by R-I-D-I-R-D. If not, it's easy to find out. So put these corners in here, put this corner just below, R-I-D-I-R-D. And then put this guy in and this guy in. Beginner's method, layer by layer. Okay, so with this done, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now, usually when I do a cuboid solve, I start off with the top and then I put the top layer in. By the end of it, everything is gonna be solved except the second layer and the uh, fourth layer. I'm gonna do it differently this time. I'm gonna do it based upon how I do these cuboids. So once again, I'm going to start off with the uh, with a green layer, and I'm looking for any other green edge. Here's a green edge here. This green edge is attached to an extension, a cross layer, so that's going to find its way to one of the cross layers um, here. So either here or here. Doesn't matter if it's white or not. So I'm going to move this up, and I can move this over here. Or I can move it over here. By cross layer, it means that this is going to be one of the cross cubes, uh, one of the cross layers that are attached to the, my base three by three. So here's a green and red, which actually belongs here. So I'll move it down, cross, move this back up. This is where it needs to be here, and bring it on up. Now, to those who know how I solve cuboids, you have noticed I'm doing this a little bit different, but I won't tell if you won't tell. Anyway, this is, doesn't count. I'm only counting the edges that are just adjacent to the centers. These are the uh, cross extensions, which I deal with later. Okay, green and orange. Line up green and orange over here, and then move it in. So I'm getting my uh, one of my base line three by threes. All right, here's a green with an extension. So this extension belongs either here, but we already have one. 
or here. So I'm gonna put it over here by this and put it up over here. So if you look at this, this is my cross. This is lined up with a orange, this is lined up with a red. These two are equivalent to each other. They can be interchanged as long as they're by a center that is an extension. That's a, one of the cross extensions uh, um, sides. These will be adjacent to that. So now I'm gonna get corners. So what corners? Well, looking at this corner, this is green, orange to match with this and some extension. So this one belongs over here. And let's find another one. Here's another green and orange. This does not belong here, so I'm gonna take it down. And I'm gonna put this at the other place, over here. Now, could I also put this here? And the answer is no, because if I tried, this green over here is gonna make this come out like this. So this belongs up here. Turn, turn, and turn. So you can see this corner is fine. Or this one by three bar is fine. Here's another corner. This belongs where the red is, it belongs over here. Perhaps it belongs in this slot over here. So take it out, and we'll just keep doing R I D I R D R I D I R D R I D I R D. All right, so you can see this belongs here. Again, ignore this part. This is part of our cross layer. If you're unsure about what I'm doing, look at the uh, tutorials on these cross cubes over here and you'll know what I mean. So another green, look for another green corner somewhere. That's gonna be right over here. It's another green and red. So this belongs here, green and red and an extension across over here. So turn, double turn up and up. Okay, so believe it or not, this is our first side, where you have this red in conjunction with this edge and these corners, this orange in conjunction with these, and these we ignore. We ignore because they're part of what's gonna be the cross layer of the top and the bottom. Okay, once we do that, we now head to the middle layer. So here's the middle layer turn it upside down, and we do algorithms to put edges here. This is an edge only layer. So anything that doesn't have blue, here's orange, this belongs over here. So to move it to the right, we have U, R, U, I, R, I, U, I, F, I, U, F. And like magic, there it is. This comes down here, same thing. Turn, 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 and turn. And let's see what else, what other kind of a mess we can make. This comes down here to the left. So that's gonna be U-I-L-I-U-L-U-F-U-I-F-I. So piece of cake, it comes into exactly where it's supposed to be. This will come down here. Turn, 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 turn and turn. So there's our edge only second layer. So two, we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna look for edges, anything that doesn't have blue. This is red. Now your three by three by five might have a different color. This can come here or it can come here. Which one? At this point, it doesn't matter because as long as this comes down here, this cross extension will be with this center or this center. At this point, at this moment, it doesn't really matter. So it's gonna be U, R, U, I, R, I, U, I, F, I, U and F, so that's in. Now this is wrong, it's red, but this does not have a cross extension on it, so this is actually wrong. All right, this orange can go here or here. I'm gonna make it go here because we already have one in here. So U, I, L, I, U, L, U, F, U, I, F, I. So as long as this is in and this is in, then everything is fine. 